So I w we got to start with what I think is maybe some of the biggest news of the year in just a few weeks, really. Uh, we are going to host an event that I think most Detroiters don't really understand how big a deal it's going to be. I'm not sure we're ready for the crowd that's going to come here for the NFL draft. We're going to have fans from all over the country, probably all over the world, coming to Detroit. And when you think about last year in Kansas City, they had 300,000 fans. There was not one other NFL city within a five-hour radius of them. We have six NFL cities within a four-hour drive of Detroit, plus Canada. I mean, this is going to be a worldwide phenomenon. 60 million people are going to be watching on TV, and we think hundreds of thousands descending on Detroit. Yeah. That, can you compare this to other events that we've had here in Detroit? No. Yeah. There's nothing that compares to this. You know, it would have to be like a South by Southwest or the Olympics, which, you know, we don't host. We don't do those but things, this is, right? This is as big as it gets as far as people here for a three-day event and and being uh, all over the city. Yeah, yeah. So talk about uh, how an event like this kind of fits into the picture, the overall picture of conventions and tourism uh, in, in the city. Obviously, this will be a big shot in the arm. Yes. Uh, but there's a lot of other things also going on and going well for us right now. No doubt. And, you know, this having the NFL choose to have maybe their second biggest signature event yeah. in the city of Detroit, that's a huge validator for our region, our city, our state. That, that, you know, and a lot of times when we're trying to sell, you know, our city for conventions, meetings, like you talked about, well, when I can say, well, by the way, the NFL chose Detroit, uh -huh. that immediately changes the narrative a little bit. Like, wow, if a brand like that thinks this is a place to hold my big event, maybe I should consider it as well. Yeah, uh, that sell, come to Detroit, visit Detroit. Uh, what does it look like today and compare it to maybe 10 years ago when we were just starting to really focus on that and, and make some improvements that would attract sure. more people. Where are we on that? The perception of the of Detroit and Michigan has changed significantly. Yeah. You know, when I um, first moved to Detroit in like early 2012, 2013, people would be, you know, I'd say, where are you from? I'd say Detroit, They're like, oh, so sorry. <laughs> yeah. And really now, I mean, I was just in California for an event uh, and we, Everywhere I would be like, you're from Detroit. Detroit's killing it. I'm hearing all this great stuff. The excitement about it, the perception change is, is really great. And I, I love it. And, and it's funny when we always say, if we can get them here, we'll get them here. Yeah. And once we get an event here and the people start to see it, they're like, I'm shocked. I can't believe how great this was. And it's almost insulting because you're like, what, what, do you, what, did <laughs> what did you, you expect? Think, right? Right. Like, this is a great place to live. And yeah. we have so much industry here and there's 20 cranes dotting the sky, skyscrapers being built yeah. everywhere. Yeah. I think that it, it's, again, it's, it's just a great feeling right now to know that we've really turned a corner and we're starting to change that perception. Yeah. One of the things that was a knock on Detroit for some convention business for a long time has, has been hotel space, right? The number of hotel rooms in downtown Detroit. Talk about how that played uh, into the NFL's de decision. I mean, this is a lot of people. Uh, they didn't seem to blink. Why, why wasn't it an issue? Yeah, big sporting events. Um, you know, as long as we took care of the NFL's VIPs, which is <laughs> They're not you know, about, about 2,000. But, <laughs> but then, the, but, you know, they, they, were, they were happy that, you know, we have 45,000 hotel rooms in Oakland, Wayne, and Macomb County. Yes. So we have enough to handle these huge events because even cities that have 15, 20,000 hotel rooms downtown, they're not going to be able to support you know, 300,000 plus fans. Right. It's gonna go all over the suburbs and that's great. But it's when we have those meetings and conventions that really wanna focus on seven, 8,000 people yeah. and they want them downtown right around the convention center, we're excluded from those events. Yeah. So it's not, it was a problem, it is a major problem right now. In the last five years, we did a study, we lost 600,000 room nights for the really? sole reason that we did not have enough hotel rooms downtown. We don't have enough. So if, if we would if we were to double our hotel capacity, that would only put us in the middle of our competitive set. Yeah. But that would be worth probably two hundred and fifty million dollars to the 
region of Southeast Michigan. Wow, wow. So, so speaking of hotel rooms uh, and building hotels, yes. we are building a hotel here in Detroit. I, I was a little surprised uh, to learn that uh, the former Joe Lewis site was gonna include a hotel. I knew it was gonna be an apartment building. I didn't know that there was gonna be a hotel. It's a big hotel, 600 rooms. Yes. Uh, talk about how that will change the picture, especially being uh, right next to uh, uh, not Cobo Hall, but now uh, Huntington, Huntington Place. Place right? Yes. Yeah. So it won't be next to it. It'll be connected. It's connected, right. So it's going to be in 600 rooms. It steps in and it'll be immediately the second biggest hotel in the, the city of, in the city. Uh, of Detroit. Yeah. So uh, again, huge benefit being connected, I mean, that immediately is a game changer. And, and when we announced that, again, I was at this uh, recent convention and so many show managers like, let's start talking about when's it gonna be ready, 27? I got an event in 28 or 29 or 30 that we're already booking it. And I can tell you that um, the US Travel Association, they put their big international travel event in Detroit in 28. The caveat was, that we have to have that hotel you ready have for that them. Hotel. They would not have chosen Detroit if we were not building that hotel, and that's a fact. Yeah. So we'll get those 600 rooms. How much more practically could we expect to expand uh, room availability in in downtown Detroit, say in the next five to ten years? I, I think that well, you know, again between the Cambria, the Godfrey, yeah. um, the uh, uh, the new hotel that's going into um, the, the Hudson Whitney. site, or the, the Hudson site, the yeah. new hotel that's going to Little Caesars Arena, yeah. all those things. So there's another, I would say, two thousand rooms that are in some form of development, yeah. which is fantastic for us, but we could easily absorb an additional 2,000 and it would actually raise the occupancy. Yeah. Because what happens is, let's say we were gonna get an event that needs 4,000 hotel rooms. Uh -huh. If we can't provide them that number, we don't get less, we get none. Right. Right. And I so, see. so it becomes like you know, it's a false narrative to think that we have to fill up our, our hotels to get that. You know, uh, a cool thing, Stephen, is the biggest concentration of hotels in Southeast Michigan is in Romulus, right by the airport. Right by the airport. The highest occupancy rate for any region, Romulus. Is that right? So the more you have, the more it draws, the more, and yeah. the more the the occupancy rate goes up for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm excited for. Uh, me the too. mob that's coming for uh, the NFL draft. That's going to be a really cool event. But uh, thanks for being here with us. Oh my God, thank you so much. Yeah. Appreciate it. Watch One Detroit, Thursday at 7.30 p.m. You can find more at OneDetroitPBS.org or subscribe to our social media channels and sign up for our One Detroit newsletter.